It's their little glass tube. And it's, uh, it's injected with the injectionist leak. So this is two millimeters by 12 millimeters. That's the, uh, the standard glass tube that we're all using. So we're here at the Deus Ex Mankind launch. I've got an NFC door I built. If I wave my magic thumb, I can unlock the door. And once that light... Yo, all staff So yesterday I was at this Deus Ex game launch event discussing human augmentation and NFC and RFID implants. I haven't got one yet, so I was kind of in the minority yesterday, which is pretty funny. And what was really awesome was Amal from Dangerous Things, who uh, he actually travelled over from the States to be this, at this event. Um, so he was there, and he's kind of like the leader in the NFC RFID implant thing and trying to take that whole thing mainstream. Now most of the implants that people get, the, kind of, the technology's been around for like 30 years, so most of the time they're these tiny little glass bees, either uh, using NFC or RFID technology, so a lot of people will actually have both in, in either hand. So why are people getting the implants? Well, they're, first of all, they're cool, because it's kind of like a, a very simple body mod, it's not that painful, I've heard. Um, and then secondly, basically you can do things like open doors with your hands, and like pay for things with your hands. And ultimately what everyone's trying to work on is basically move us towards a cashless, keyless, and cardless society. I mean, why do we need to carry around like stupid, bulky walls? This entire thing should just be inside my hand. So I think the only reason why that hasn't happened yet is purely a social stigma. I mean, uh, we've, we're pretty used to like tap and pay, pay pass, like Opal cards, kind of like contactless cards. Implants is the next step. And it is quite a big step from getting, say, a wristband or a card or an NFC ring to getting an implant, but it kind of makes more sense. I mean, think of all the times you've forgotten a, a Fitbit or you've left a Fitbit behind or you left your watch behind. And Amal's working on some really awesome things to basically like make our next generation chips because the issue at the moment is most people use these glass beads and the problem is the antenna's coiled up inside so it, it has a very small surface area. So what he's developed is actually a, an implant that has a wide surface area. It's kind of got like a flat implant so it has a wide antenna so your read range is about that distance and he's got about 20 people beta testing it right now. And then he mentioned this thing that I hadn't heard of before called Yuki, U-K-I. Um, and what it is is actually it's a next generation after this next generation implant that actually can store cryptographic keys on it. Because when we get to that stage, we're actually storing computers in our hands. I mean, you can actually store cryptographic keys, so you can have co completely decentralized identity, payments, passwords, and processing in your hand. Because one of the big issues with the implants at the moment, the chips at the moment, is that they only have a very small storage size. So you're basically only storing user identifiers, which then speak to central service to do payments and things like that. But I think he's playing with the Yuki and the next device is that because it can actually store a lot of data on there and it can uh, encrypt the data and you can store your own cryptographic keys, what you can do is actually store up a queue of all these transactions on the device. Because if you do that, is you can actually have all these decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payments uh, kind of like queue up in the storage bank in an encrypted way. And then the next time you scan at a merchant facility, that's when it sinks. And Amal's motivation for all of this is really solving that problem of identity. And a lot of people are trying to do that with Ethereum and the blockchain now. How do you solve decentralized identity? How do you link the meat space you to the digital you? And perhaps an implant technology that has all your cryptographic keys and all your information and all your kind of personal identity and life stored on an implant in your hand from birth, perhaps that's the way to do it. So imagine this scenario, it sounds scary, but just go along with it. So from birth, say you're, you're, you're basically implanted with a chip. That chip has its own unique identifier, its own cryptographic keys. It's then paired to a wallet address on a blockchain. Now that chip basically becomes your personal identity. It, it's pairing the physical you to the digital you, um, which you control. No government, no business controls your identity on this. It's all under your control. So you can store all of your identity systems, your passport, you can, your bank accounts, uh, all your passwords, um, and any data access, permissions and things like that, all your cards, all your cash, everything on that one chip. You could then completely throw away your wallet. I mean, all, all cash, all cards, all keys. You don't need any of it anymore. And the cool thing is, you can basically have your own bank account that is not owned by any bank. I mean, your bank account, your details, all your permissions, all your security becomes under your control. I mean, your bank account is basically just a wallet address and a blockchain. It's all decentralized. There's no banks, there's no governments, there's no businesses in the middle. In addition to having like added security, identity, and kind of control of your own data, you can do stuff like Jedi mind tricks, not just opening doors, but basically having the entire world kind of morph around your needs. So I think the next step after all that is imagine having implants to kind of like broadcast a passive signal, a bit like an eye beacon, because at the moment the, the glass beads have a contact read of that range, flex and is that range, imagine just broadcasting to the world. Especially with 500 billion Internet of Things devices expected to come online within the next 5 to 10 years, imagine uh, passively broadcasting out this thing that's implanted in each of us and actually walk through the world and adapts to you. And so as much as implants are scary and controversial right now, I think just like smartphones, they're going to add way more value to our lives than we expect, to the point where everyone's going to want to have one and we'll all be chips at future.